Well, coming up on today's show, an update from Stockholm, where I currently am. A super safe Model 3 and a crazy homemade range extender. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's Tuesday, the 9th of October. It's Martin Lee here, and I've been through most EV stories today, so you don't have to. Normally, I go through a lot more, but today's been a big day of travelling, heading from London. It's about a two-hour flight to Sweden, to Stockholm, uh, where I'm here for a couple of meetings in the morning, uh, tomorrow morning, and then out in the afternoon to have a look at some of the EV infrastructure around here and check out what's more popular in terms of the chargers, try and find some EVs being driven, hopefully maybe even find a few people to chat to as well. Uh, Past a Tesla supercharger station, I had six stalls on the way, about 25 minutes north of Stockholm. Uh, That was on the way in, but uh, supercharger-wise, that's the only thing uh, nearby here. I'm in uh, in the Hilton, uh, in the middle of Stockholm. So you think this is kind of must be relatively in the middle of? I don't really know about the city, but it must be kind of central. Uh, Not too many chargers around here, Uh, and that wasn't just because on my plug share app I still had it set to uh, the Renault Zoe (laughs) because I was doing some work for where my wife could charge uh, last night. Uh, near home. Uh, But even with all of the charges around, there's not too many of them in the local area. So I'll do a bit of of exploring and uh, following up the little trip to Norway about a month ago, uh, a trip to Sweden. Uh, Now to come and have a look at uh, what's going on. Well, thank you very much to MyEV for helping make the show. They've built the first marketplace specifically for electric vehicles. It's totally free uh, to go on there to buy and to sell your car. There's no fees, there's no charges, and you can learn and research about EVs on there as well. Thank you to another Patreon producer joining up in the last 24 hours. It means that our count of supporters, of Patreon supporters, edges ever closer to 100. Will you be the 100th? I'd love to, I'd love to see how quickly we can get there. You are a legend, Maxwell Murgay or Murget. Maxwell, thank you very much uh, for being a producer of this show. Uh, the really big story I want to get to today as I sit here in the uh, hotel room uh, here in Stockholm, flicking through the news, the really, well, actually the big thing on all the TV screens downstairs in the bars and the restaurants and stuff, because they have like the rolling news channels, is the climate news today, which is if we can limit climate change to 1.5 degrees, we might just save this thing by 2030 if we end up going three degrees over, uh, which is the current forecasts for some, uh, well then we really are putting planet Earth on the brink of mass extinction of things like coral reefs entire animal species sea level rise just uh, just unthinkable and just it's just another reminder uh, of why we need to move to zero emissions transport zero emissions energy production as soon as possible the other big story uh, today flicking through my news feed has been the tesla model 3 uh, nitsa in the US has released its findings in the probability of in- injury for those involved in an accident driving the Model 3, and it is the lowest score they've ever awarded. So unless you're driving a tank around, if you want to be safe, you should be in a Model 3. Well, Tesla explained that NHTSA has tested the Model 3, the long-range rear-wheel drive version, as part of their new car assessment program. A series of crash tests used to calculate the likelihood of serious bodily injury for the front, the side, and the rollover crashes. Now, the agency's data, says Tesla, shows the vehicle occupants are less likely to be seriously hurt in these types of crashes uh, when in a Model 3 than in any other car. NHTSA's previous tests of uh, the Model S and the X still hold the record for the second and third lowest probabilities of injury, making Tesla vehicles the best ever rated by NHTSA. They expect similar results for the Model 3 variants, including the dual motor vehicles, when they are rated. I'll put a full link in the show notes to more details about that, uh, but congratulations to everybody who works at Tesla for helping create such an incredibly safe car. I, I saw one particularly timely tweet from someone today says that in one day Elon Musk landed a rocket in California and created the world's safest car. Not a bad day. Moving on, and this article in Bloomberg says that big oil companies should be really worried about a small piece of news with Audi's 
Etron Quattro launch. And I picked up on it at the time. I mentioned it to you on the podcast. I thought this was huge news. And then, well, nobody else seemed to agree with me. And now Bloomberg have picked up on this as well. So Liam Denning has been taking a look at the announcement that Amazon is going to be installing charge points for its customers. And the only reason I got excited about this is because I think Amazon, just about one of the most exciting companies in uh, in the world right now, uh, everything that they seem to do seems to make total sense to my tiny brain anyway, in terms of creating long-term value based around making their customers' life better. And I always talk about the incredible thing about whether it's getting your groceries delivered within an hour or more typically with Amazon Prime, I've decided that I needed something late in the day, seven, eight o'clock in the evening and ordering it on my Amazon Prime. And the next morning turning up at work, because we have 24 hour security at work, a lot of stuff gets delivered to work. They're very kind. They let us get our parcels delivered to the the reception at my workplace. And I've turned up at work before at nine, half nine, and my parcel's waiting for me. Any company that can do that blows my mind. And now they're getting into the car charging game. Well, the oil industry has been more concerned with generating supply than encouraging demand. Why bother? Drivers have no alternative. The hassle of charging has long been one of the things holding back EV uh, cars in the market. Well, Amazon's entry is going to help make that easier. So Audi customers, they buy their e-tron Quattro and Amazon looks after all of the installation for you. The fossil fuel industry, says Bloomberg, should be worried about a company like Amazon encroaching onto its territory. They have this history of disruption and doing it brilliantly. In the summer of 2008, three of the world's most valuable, five of the world's most valuable companies were oil and gas producers. Exxon was number one. Today, Four years after the global collapse in oil prices, big tech dominates. And when Amazon say, you know what, we're going to get involved in EVs, they're just dipping their toe now. But you just wait. Massive disruption coming. Well, if you want to talk about where EV charges should go, there was an article I found today as I was on the plane flicking through some articles that I'd saved that I thought I'd have a little read of. And the Fast Company article is exactly the kind of mainstream website headline that I think takes people up the garden path. Uh, They were saying in Fast Company, uh, it's typically so many articles I see like this, that what if we put ultra-fast chargers at all the gas stations? Then we wouldn't have to change what we do. But I think the whole thing about EVs is that it is an opportunity. It's a once in, in more than a generation, what's in a hundred years opportunity to change how we fuel our personal mobility rather than going to a place to put energy in your thing that moves you? Why do you have to do that? We, we, can, we can charge at home, charge at the shops, charge at work. Maybe we don't run our cars down to zero energy and then fill a whole tank. Maybe we just constantly top up 5 or 10%. I mean, you wouldn't do that at the gas station. You wouldn't just pop in and put $2 in. But maybe that's the way that we do it with EVs going in the, in the future. Maybe that's a change of thinking. Fast companies say in the not-too-distant future, your local gas station may have charges for electric cars next to the gas pumps. Uh, Gilbarco Vida Route, one of the largest suppliers of fuel dispensers to gas stations, has just invested in... In Tritium, or Tritium, however you say it, they're an electric vehicle charging company. They make ultra-fast chargers for things that you've seen in North America, things like the Ionity Network in uh, Europe are using their ultra-fast chargers, the kind of things that you can use for 10, 15, 20 minutes, get a full, well, 80% charge, and now another bit of the EV infrastructure, I guess you would say, like the EV uh, marketplace. Uh, is being invested in by old oil and gas money. And finally, uh, Toyota RAV4 EV owner was pretty fed up with the range, and so he took things into his own hands. Uh, This rather enthusiastic owner wanted to increase the range of his Toyota, so he built a simple trailer solution which doubles the capacity of his Toyota. It's a simple trailer, right, and it's uh, 454 kilograms, according to Gizmodo, and it's made from another Toyota floor plan casing, so it's probably really safe, actually, and they've been the kind of thing that would be bolted into a RAV4, he simply made a trailer out of, and he tows it around all day, therefore doubling his range. 
brilliant. I love this di- DIY-ness of it all. Totally impractical. Because the high-voltage cables are hanging out and of the side of it in the wind. And uh, what could go wrong, right? What could go wrong? So that's one of the reasons why so many car makers are going for these soft hybrid systems, these 48 volt systems, because they fall below the threshold of where you don't have to have all the orange cables, all the high voltage stuff. It's cheaper to do. Yeah, I'm thinking I probably won't recommend this solution for anybody that wants to increase their range. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I thought a funny story to end on. Thank you for listening today. And thank you very much for taking part in our question of the week. Whilst I'm over here in Stockholm, on my travels, you can still send me an email. The address is hello at evnewsdaily.com and tell me about the answer to this week's question of the week set by myev.com. What incentives are available where you live? Which ones have you taken advantage of? And which incentives, if any, are the most worthwhile at a local or national level? Send me your answer on email. Also, the blog has a feedback form. There's the fa- the Facebook and YouTube comments if you want to leave them there. Well, there are 95 patrons of the show, and if you wanted to, check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Uh, you are more than welcome to see what all the fuss is about. In the meantime, there's 258 episodes of the show in all the places that you get podcasts. And whilst I'll be doing a bit of work over here, I will still be checking my phone. So if you want to catch up with me on the social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'm off on my travels tomorrow. It's almost midnight here now, so it's definitely bedtime. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.